Chapter 36 The Council and the Decision John chapter 11 verses 47 to 57 Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If he let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but, being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him to death. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand, and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover, to purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus, and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple, What think thee, that who will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that, if any man knew where he were, he should show it, that they might take him. John chapter 11 Verses 47 to 57. We are told in verse 47 that the chief priests and the Pharisees held a council meeting. It would have been led by the controlling Sadducean party, whose power depended on their cooperation with Rome. The temple and its presiding priests were Sadducees. The question raised was What shall we do? We are faced with a great crisis, and we cannot sit back and await its outcome. We must act. Now, it was not a question of who Jesus was. He was a threat to their power and had to be dealt with as such. The summation was this. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe in him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. Verse 48. A man who can raise someone dead and buried four days will have all men believe in him. Without mentioning Lazarus, the leaders were referring to his resurrection as an open and obvious fact. They never questioned it. The consequence they feared, or said they feared, was that the Romans could come to take over Judea and displace the Jews. This was a very remote possibility. True, the people would try to make Jesus their Messiah King, but this had already been attempted. John chapter 6 verse 15, and it had been rejected by Jesus. What the religious leaders were actually afraid of was that Jesus would destroy their power and somehow replace them. Since they were the tools of Roman power, the Sadducees at this point openly assumed the leadership in opposing Jesus. In that particular year, the Roman appointee as high priest was Caiaphas. Since the office gave great power and wealth to the office holder, Rome allowed no man to hold the office more than briefly. His statement, verses 49-50, to 50, was addressed not to doubters as to what the course of action should be, but to the squeamish, those who wanted Jesus dead but balked at judicial murder. The issue, said Caiaphas, is this. Who should live, this man or us and our power over the nation? Someone is going to die. Either Jesus or us and our rule over the nation. Take your choice. No moral question is raised, The issue is seen as one of power and control. When faced with this choice, there was no longer any hesitation. Then, from that day forth, they took counsel together for to put him to death. Verse 53 They were now self-consciously planning the death of the one who had revealed himself to be God's Son and the Messiah. John adds, ironically, that Caiaphas spoke unknowingly as a prophet. The death of Jesus would indeed save the true nation, the kingdom of God. He is elect from every tribe, tongue and nation. Verses 51 and 52. All would be gathered together into membership in his kingdom. Jesus left the area for a remote place, Ephraim, which was probably situated northeast of Jerusalem. Verse 54. 
Dr. Cornelius Van Til often called attention to epistemological self-consciousness, which means, roughly, knowing ourselves and what we know. It is the self-recognition of our moral and religious ground and nature. Men are prone to giving themselves noble motives and reasons, even when they sin, and to credit themselves with good intentions in all things. To be epistemologically self-conscious is to be fully aware of what we are and of our often specious reasoning about it. Most men fight against epistemological self-consciousness and indulge in self-justification. They try to make even their sin into a form of nobility on their part. In prisons, a strict caste system exists. Commonly, child molesters are at the bottom, but even they have their rationales and self-justifications. They blame the child. The council under Caiaphas made a decision and a choice. They offered a rationale. This man or us and the nation. All the same, their decision was clearly an evil one. They knew better than the disciples that Jesus had declared that, on the third day after his crucifixion, he would rise from the dead. They therefore asked Pilate to place a troop of Roman guards at the tomb. Matthew chapter 27 verses 62 to 66. They had paid better attention to Jesus' words than had the disciples, but they also trusted that Roman soldiers would be able to deal with one risen from the dead. The festival of the Passover was nearing, and as the pilgrims began to enter Jerusalem, their great subject of interest was Jesus. They asked one another, What think ye that he will not come to the feast? Verses 55 following. Their attitude was clearly not hostile. It was curious. They wanted to witness history's key event. They no doubt craved the blessed results of it, but had no wish to incur personal risk. They were devout and religious people, but their desire was to remain uninvolved. Meanwhile, the chief priests and the Pharisees, both the major power groups in the nation, had given a commandment that, if any man knew where he, Jesus, were, he should show it that they might take him. Verse 57 Their long animosity to one another now gave way to an alliance against Jesus. The Sadducees and the Pharisees alike wanted Jesus crucified. To understand the enormity of their evil, remember their words. What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. Verse 47 their denial of his claims was thus in opposition to their own knowledge. They knew that Jesus was right in stating that his miracles were God's work in and through him. They were therefore not only rejecting Jesus, but they were also rejecting God. Their choice was the nation and their own power rather than God and Jesus Christ. Here again we see epistemological self-consciousness. Like all sinners, only more so, they were without excuse. They had sentenced Jesus to death because he was God's Messiah, and not theirs 